In this video, we continue with chapter 5.3, and our learning objective for this video is going to be to apply the gram schmidt orthonormalization process, and we'll see how to do that in SIMPI. So we now look at this procedure for finding an orthonormal basis. It's called the gram schmidt orthonormalization. I know that's a mouthful, uh, so just say it as best you can, or just call it gram schmidt or GS for short. Uh, so it's called the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process after this Danish, Danish mathematician, uh, Jorgen Pedersen Gram, who lived from 1850 to 1916, and the German mathematician Erhard Schmidt, who lived from 1876 to 1959. So it has three steps. The first step is to begin with a basis for the inner product space. It does not need to be orthogonal, nor does it need to consist of unit vectors. You're gonna convert the basis to an orthogonal basis. And then you're gonna normalize each vector in the orthogonal basis to form an orthonormal basis. So the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process leads to a matrix factorization, similar to the LU factorization that we studied back in chapter two. So let's take a look at the theorem. We're not gonna prove it, but we're gonna look at our examples to see how it works. So we're gonna let uh, B1 be the vectors V1 through Vn. And that's gonna be a basis for the inner product space V. Then we're gonna let B prime be this other set W1 through Wn, where the first vectors are equal, W1 equals V1. Then W2 equals V2 minus the inner product of V2 with W1 over the inner product of W1 with itself, all multiplied by W1. So this bit here is going to give us a scalar. So we're going to be able to say V2 minus some scalar times W1. Then the process goes on. So for W3 now, we are going to do this calculation. Start with vector V3, and then you're going to subtract the inner product of V3 with W1 over W1 inner product with itself, and then V3 inner product with W2 divided by the inner product of W2 with itself. So these are also gonna be scalars. So using these scalars, you're gonna write this new vector W3 as a linear combination of V3, W1, and W2. So it's an iterative process, meaning each step builds on the step before. So you end up down here at the nth step where we get Vn minus, you know, this scalar that comes from Vn inner product with Wn divided by W1 inner product with itself, all multiplied by W1, then this scalar for W2, all the way through the scalar for uh, Wn minus one and element Vn inner product with that. So this B prime that we're constructing forms an orthogonal basis for V. Then the last step, and you could quit here and call your basis an orthogonal basis, but the last step to get a full-on orthonormal basis is to normalize each of the vectors. So step three here is to take U that we're gonna call the unit vector and build that by taking WI divided by its norm. So then this new set B double prime of U1 through UN is an orthonormal basis. Now the good news is that this, as I said, is an iterative process. So that means it's easily coded into a computer. So I'm gonna be able to show you the function that's already pre-coded in the SIMPI, so you don't have to build your own function that runs through this process for us. And then we also get that the span of V1 through VK equals the span of U1 through UK uh, for the Ks that go one through N. So. Uh, the spans are equal. That makes sense because uh, U1 through UN is just an orthonormal basis for V. All right, so let's look at an example to make some sense out of this. And we'll do examples by hand with really small sets. So here we're going to do it with uh, V equals 1, 1, and 0, 1, the set in R2. Uh, longer calculations, please use simply be good to yourself. It's super easy in here, as you can see, to make a sign error because the scalars can be negative or positive and you end up doing a lot of arithmetic. So we'll work through it with some small sets, but you can uh, typically, 
in most cases, use SIMPI to do these calculations for you. Okay, so uh, our basis for R2 here, B is 1, 1, and 0, 1. And you can see that, oh yeah, those are linearly independent. And so it makes sense they'll form a basis. Here they are visually over here in R2. Uh, 0, 1 is just good old J hat as we think about it. And then 1, 1 is the vector from the origin to 1, 1. And you know, uh, V2 has uh, length one, but you can see right away V1 is going to have length uh, root two there, so it's not a unit vector. All right, so the Gram Schmidt orthonormalization process uh, produces this. So we start with W1, and that's just the same as V1, so that's our 1, 1 vector. And then W2 is going to be uh, the dot product, because we're in R2, that's our inner product space. So it's going to be V2 minus the dot product of V2 with W1 over the dot product of W1 with itself. So W1 is just V1. So we know uh, the norm of uh, V1 is just gonna be the square root of one squared plus one squared. So the norm is root two. So then if you square your norm, we get a two here. So that's where this two on the bottom is coming from. And then you can verify V2 dotted with W1, you're just gonna get a one from the second elements and the one and zero give you a zero there. So that's where the one here is coming from. So we have vector V1 uh, right here, the one, one multiplied by the negative half. And then we start with vector V2. So here's our vector V2 minus one half V1. That's this calculation we see right down here. And so zero um, minus a half is the negative half, and then one minus a half is the half. So that's our W2. So these vectors are not uh, unit vectors yet because we know W1 uh, is not a unit vector. And also you can say, well, negative a half, a half, that's not gonna be a unit vector either. So we're gonna normalize them. So now to normalize them, we take each vector and divide it by its norm. So the norm of W1, we showed up here, that's the root two that we got right here. So we just do one over root two times uh, vector one, one. So that gives us the root two over two, common root two over two. And we see that right over here. And you can see, oh yeah, that does lie in the unit circle. That is a unit vector. And then we can do the same thing for U2. So the norm of the negative one half half vector is gonna be one over root two, but that's just when we take one over one over root two, that just is a root two here, multiplied by negative half and a half. So that's gonna give us a vector negative root two over two, comma root two over two. So that's over here in the second quadrant, also on the unit circle. So that's also very clearly visually a unit vector. So this second graph here is our orthonormal basis. And you can see, oh yeah, I could combine those uh, to form any vector in R2, just like I could combine those first two vectors to form any vector in R2. So let's take a look at how Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization works in SIMPI. So you can uh, enter your set of uh, row vectors as you could just do it as three matrices here. And I called that set here L. And then you can do Gram-Schmidt L. So right here, I called it out one. Um, so you say out one equals or whatever you wanna call your object, Gram-Schmidt L. And so this gives you a set of orthogonal vectors. So this gives us step two of Gram-Schmidt. This gives us a conversion of the basis to an orthogonal basis. So this is step two, orthogonal vectors that form a basis. Now we want an orthonormal basis. So we want everything to have uh, length one. So we want a set of unit vectors. So to do that, there's this optional argument. So you're gonna do Gram-Schmidt L comma true, and that's gonna specify uh, that the output should be normalized. 
by default, this function does a false here. So if you just do Gram Schmidt L, what it's basically doing is running by default Gram Schmidt L false. And the false is to normalize it or not. So if you just do Gram Schmidt L, you get the orthogonal vector spaces, but they're not normalized. So to normalize them, you do Gram Schmidt L or whatever you've called your matrix here, comma true, and you get your normalized output. And you can recognize the normalized output by all those messy rationalized roots in there. And remember, Simbi, Simbi does all the symbolic uh, calculations for us. So it will normalize and um, rationalize the roots. So just remember when you do calculation in Simbi, if you're comparing it to something you've done by hand, you might not have rationalized it by hand, but uh, Simpy will rationalize the root. So you might have the same answer. It just looks a little different. So don't be surprised when you're checking work. If uh, your answers look different, they still might be the same answers. So check to see, did Simpy rationalize the roots? All right, so we're gonna work this one by hand and then I'm gonna go check it in Simpy. So here uh, we're gonna use the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process to construct an orthonormal basis from the set of vectors uh, U uh, or W1 is gonna be one, two, two. And then uh, the second vector, I guess this is V1, V2 and V3, I should say. So the second vector is negative one, negative one, zero. And the third vector V3 is one, zero, zero. So now we got to apply our Gram-Schmidt here. Okay, so the first step of Gram-Schmidt is just to take W1 equal to V1. So right here, we've got W1 is the one, two, two. And then to normalize it, well, we just use our usual normalization steps. So we take one, two, two divided by the normal one, two, two. Uh, that one, two, two is gonna be root one plus four plus four after I square those twos. So that's root nine or three. So that's where the three in the denominators are coming from. All right, now W2 is down here. So W2 is, we start with V2, negative one, negative one, zero. And then we use the dot product here to get our scalar. So we take uh, V2 dotted with W or U1, I guess. Yeah, we're gonna do the normalized version here. So V2 dotted with U1 um, multiplied by U1. So you can use the unit vector and then that gives you things already in unit form. So that's why we're doing it this way to save some steps. Uh, and then that's gonna be multiplied by U, this is what U1 here. All right, so when we do the dot product here, Oh, you can see you're gonna get a negative one third and a negative two thirds. So that gives you the negative one here. And then we're subtracting. So you're gonna get negative one, negative one, zero, uh, plus one, two, two. So that gives us W2, which is negative two thirds, negative one third, two thirds. Then we're gonna normalize it. So we're normalizing along the way. This is just a more efficient way when you're working it by hand. So normalizing it gives us uh, negative two thirds, negative one third, two thirds, because this was uh, already had norm one. And you could double check that. You know, you know that two squared is a four, the one squared is a one, that two squared is a four. So the root of uh, nine is gonna give us a three. So you can see, oh yeah, it's gonna have norm one there. So let's do W3 by hand here. So W3 is gonna be, if I can squeeze it in here, uh, one, zero, zero, because I start with vector V3. And then I have to subtract uh, one, zero, zero dotted with W1, but I'm gonna use U1, the normalized version. So that's gonna be one third, two thirds and two thirds. And then that gets multiplied by U1, which is one third, two thirds, two thirds. Sorry, this is looking messy. 
And then uh, we're gonna minus, you know, why don't I make a new slide and we'll just write it all in there because I'm gonna run out of room here. Okay, so I'm gonna head over to a new blank slide I just inserted so I can write this out better. And that'll be easier for you to see. So W3 is the one zero zero minus one zero zero dotted with R U one. That's the one third, two thirds, two thirds. And remember we're using the normalized vectors early on here just to save us calculation time. And then that's gonna get multiplied by the one third, two third, two thirds. So remember this bit here is gonna be the scalar. But uh, we have another vector we also have to incorporate. So this is also gonna be minus one zero zero dotted with U2, which was negative two thirds, negative one third, two thirds. And that's going to be our other scalar. And that's all going to get multiplied by U2, which is negative two thirds, negative one third, and two thirds. And then uh, when we work out these scalars, so these are our two scalar calculations here, we're going to get uh, one zero zero minus uh, one third. And you can see, oh yeah, one dotted with one third is just one third times vector u1, which is a one third, two thirds, two thirds. Uh, and then that's gonna be minus, this is gonna be um, negative two thirds because the one zero zero dotted with uh, this u2 vector, only the negative two thirds is gonna stay because we're dotting with one zero zero. So that's our scalar multiplied by the u2 vector which is negative two thirds, negative one third, two thirds. And you don't have to normalize first. I've just done that to make our calculations a little bit easier. So this is gonna work out to be four ninths. So you can see, okay, one minus one ninth minus four ninths. So you're gonna get one minus five ninths. So you'll have four ninths left. And then you get zero minus two ninths minus another two ninths. So you get negative four ninths. And then you get zero minus two ninths here. And then this is gonna be plus four ninths from over here. So that gives you a positive two ninths there. All right, and then we have to normalize it. So to normalize it, that's our U3 vector. We're gonna take four ninths, negative four ninths, and two ninths, and divide it by the norm of this vector. And so the norm of it, I think it's gonna work out to be a three. Because if you think about it, uh, the four squares give us 16s, which are gonna be uh, 16, 16 is 32. And then we're gonna get another four. So it's gonna be so 36 over nine. So that's gonna be uh, 36 over nine is four. And then we root it, we get a two. So we end up getting here, U3 is two thirds, negative two thirds, and a one third. All right, so you can see this is not so great to do by hand. So I'm gonna pause and switch over to Simpy and then we'll verify these calculations in Simpy. Okay, I am here in Simpy and so I'm going to verify my Gram-Schmidt calculations here for these vectors. So I'm gonna call it, let's say I call this B. I'm gonna say B equals the matrix Oh no, it's gonna be the set, sorry, of each matrix. So we're gonna have B equals the set. So we're gonna use square brackets first here. And then we're gonna represent each vector using matrix. 
So my first vector was one, two, two. So then in parentheses, I'm gonna have in brackets, one, two, two. And then I'm gonna enter the next vector by saying matrix and then parentheses for the matrix function and then in brackets, negative one, negative one, zero. Close my brackets, close my parentheses. And then my last vector I'm gonna represent again as a row matrix. So matrix parentheses and then in brackets, one, zero, zero. So this takes a little bit to type in but I assure you it's much faster than what we just did by hand. And then I'll call my output out one. You can call it whatever you wanna name it. So I'll say output one is gonna be Graham Schmidt. You have to make sure you type it right, spell it correctly. So no hyphen in here, uh, capitalize the Schmidt part. And so we'll do Graham Schmidt B comma true. And that should give us uh, the exact results we got for you know, vectors u1, u2, and u3. So I'll type out one to get that result out because I gave it a name. And there we go, it's a perfect match. So look at that. There's the same results we got much, much quicker. And you don't even actually have to type out one. You could just type, I don't know why I saved it as an object. I did that in the example, but it's not necessary. You can just type Graham Schmidt be true and there's your result. So you don't have to give it a name. And then if you want to see the orthonormal vectors that aren't normalized, you can do Gram Schmidt B. And so here's our unnormalized vectors. And you can see, oh yeah, that's uh, first vector is just what V1 was because W1 equals V1. Um, and then the third vector is what we got for V3. So this is just W and W3. Okay, I'm gonna do one more example in this video of the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process, and I'll show that calculation by hand. So I'm gonna switch back to the slides. Okay, here's one more example of using the Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization process by hand. So we're gonna construct an orthonormal basis from B1 here, that's gonna be one X and X squared in P2, the set of all polynomials of degree two or less. Uh, and we know we could construct any polynomial of degree two or less using uh, this basis one x and x squared. That makes sense because you could multiply through uh, by any of the coefficients to get any polynomial degree two or less. And then we're gonna use this familiar inner product from earlier in chapter five. Uh, the inner product of polynomials p and q is the integral uh, from negative one to one of p of x multiplied by q of x integrated with respect to dx. All right. So we're gonna let V1 be one, V2 be X and V3 be X squared. So W1 is one and then a unit vector is just one divided by the normal one, which is just going to be the calculation from uh, integrating. So the norm of one squared is going to be the integral from negative one to one of one with respect to X. So that's gonna be X evaluated from negative one to one. So that's two. So when we root that to get the norm, that's a root two. So u1 here is one over root two. All right, by similar processes, we get these results for u2 and u3. So I will write them out by hand. Uh, I think I can fit u2 in this slide and then I'll do u3 in the next slide. So w2 is gonna be x, minus the integral from negative one to one of x multiplied by one over root two, all with respect to x. And then that's all gonna get multiplied like as a coefficient by uh, u1, which was one over root two, because remember this is the vector we're finding. And then that's gonna equal x minus x squared over four evaluated from 
negative one to one. So that uh, just works out to be X because the second part cancels itself out. So W2 is X. And so when we wanna find the unit vector for it, we're gonna say U2 is X over the norm of X. Uh, so the norm of X squared is gonna be the integral from negative one to one of x multiplied by itself dx. Well, that's just uh, x cubed over three evaluated from negative one to one, right? Just a power rule there. So that's just two thirds. So u2 is going to be uh, the root of this. So it's gonna be like x over root two thirds. I'm sorry, the norm is gonna be the root of this and then u2 is x over that, but we write it a little bit nicer as root three over two x, which is just what we got here. All right, I'm gonna do u3 in the next screen, but we can see u3 is gonna work out to be root five over two root two multiplied by three uh, x squared minus one. And obviously the Gram-Schmidt in SIMPI only is for R2. So you wouldn't uh, be able to do P2 Gram-Schmidt without uh, coding out your own uh, function, I believe. All right, so let's start with finding W3. So W3 is gonna be V3, which is X squared minus the integral from negative one to one of x squared multiplied by one over root two, because one over two is u1 with respect to x. And then that's all gonna be our coefficient multiplied by one over root two. And then we're gonna have minus the integral of x squared from negative one to one uh, multiplied by root three over two x, because that's u2 uh, with respect to x, and that's all going to get multiplied by x. Oh, sorry, by root 3 over 2x. I forgot about the root 3 over 2 part. Okay, so when we do our integration and combine everything, we get this x squared minus x to the third over six evaluated from negative one to three, or sorry, negative one to one. Uh, and then minus those root threes over twos are both gonna give us a three over two, uh, x to the fourth over four, evaluated from negative one to one. And then this also gets multiplied by this x over here. So we still got an X here. So this is gonna give us a coefficient in here. So what we did is we took the root three over twos and combined them just to get that three halves there. Okay, so keep on chucking through this one. So then we get X squared minus, uh, we're gonna get minus one third because see how the middle term over here is gonna cancel out. So we get X squared minus one third in here. Oh, sorry, this gives us a one third that I circled and then the last term cancels out because we've got the X of four. So the even power cancels out. Okay, so now we've got to find U3. So U3, the unit vector is going to be X squared minus one third, all divided by the norm of X squared minus one third. So we have to find the norm of x squared minus one third. So x squared minus one third's norm is going to be the integral from negative one to one of x squared minus one third squared with respect to x. And you can expand this out and integrate and you're gonna get eight over 45. So I think I can squeeze it in here. Uh, so you're gonna get the integral from negative one to one of x to the fourth minus two thirds x squared. So imagine foiling this all out. 
uh, minus one ninth. And then with respect to x, and then that's gonna give you x to the fifth over five by the power rule, minus two x to the third over nine, to the nine plus x over nine from negative one to one. Uh, so you end up with uh, eight over 45. And so then when you're finding U3 over here, I'll switch back to black. U3 is gonna be X squared minus one third over the square root of eight over 45. So that's how they ended up back here with this right here, just by rationalizing, we get root five over uh, two root two. And that's because the rationalization and then crossing things out because from the 45 you get like the three root five that's going to come up on the top and then the square root of eight is going to give you um is the two root two and then the threes cancel out and so that's where the three x squared comes from they just got rid of the one third there so that's our gram schmidt orthonormalization process. Uh, sometimes we'll have to do it by hand. If I do ask you to do it by hand, it'll be small calculations like this. And then for longer uh, calculations in uh, the real numbers, Rn, I 